First of all, I would like to welcome you all in Nepal and in Kathmandu. As you know, Kathmandu, an old city of heritage, rich culture, and the country, Nepal, a very beautiful and rich from different aspects. I would like to welcome you all in this program especially. I would like to extend my best wishes for the grand success of this very, very important program, conference, this very 56th conference of ICAO. At the meantime, ICAO is celebrating its 57th, 75th <laughs> anniversary after its establishment in 1944 in Chicago. I would like to congratulate all in this regard. And I would like to extend my best wishes for the grand success of this very important program, conference, where from 44 countries, more than 350 distinguished friends are gathered here from different parts of Asia and other parts of the world as well. I think I have not so many things to say because before me, my minister for culture, tourism and civil aviation explained about the situation, desires, aspirations of Nepal, Nepali people, and the government of Nepal. Where we are now, and where we want to go, how we want to work together with our friends, he made very clear. And I listened important speeches for Mr. Bernard, Bernard Ellu and Mr. Arun Misra as well. And I found the feelings of all of us are similar. Commitments are similar. And our efforts are similar. We want to strengthen, particularly, civil aviation uh, particularly safety in the field of civil aviation. And for that, we have developed common rules, regulations, led by ICAO. ICAO has formulated very clear policies and we are strictly following those policies. from where we can develop and strengthen security aspects in the field of civil aviation. I need not mention that where we are now, 
we were particularly in the phase of political struggle to establish democratic system. Now, we have completed that phase. We establish Federal Democratic Republic. We drafted and promulgated a very beautiful and best constitution through the Constituent Assembly, which was well represented by the different sectors or almost all sections of our society. So it was a little bit large, but it was very colorful and it was very effective to reflect the aspirations of the people of all sectors and segments of our society. And the Constitution is promulgated. And, to, and we entered into the phase of implementing the Constitution. For that, we held elections of all three tiers of the federal system. And After the elections we promulgated, we developed, we passed bills from the parliament to implement the constitution and we successfully developed some, passed some 35 or more new laws and amended 165 and more laws to implement the Constitution. And now, we have, altogether, we have three tiers of governments, the federal, the provincial, and the local. Altogether, one federal government, seven provincial governments, and 753 local governments. Altogether, 761 governments we have. And the very first year, even in the very first year, there were no problems about the division of powers, resources, authorities among the different types of governments with a very harmonious relationship. We started our journey towards the economic development. At the same time, we were making the laws, amending the laws, creating other structures. So many things we had to do to introduce, to start the practice of the federal system. But at the same time, we achieved 7.1% economic growth for the first time in the history. Now, we have concentrated our efforts for economic development. There are so many aspects, agriculture, industry, trade, tourism, infrastructure development, health and education, IT sector, artificial intelligence, etc. we have to develop. Among all this, 
the tourism sector is very important. And you know, Nepal, everybody knows that Nepal is a beautiful country. But it is not only the truth. Nepal is not only beautiful, but it is resourceful too. We have natural resources. We have young population. 60% of our population is working population. 40% of our population is young population. And demographic dividend, natural resources. These are our strength. And our national desire, which we have fixed, prosperous Nepal and happy Nepal. Prosperity itself cannot bring happiness. If there is prosperity but there is no security, then people cannot feel happy. They cannot be happy. To be happy, people must feel they are secure and they are living respectful life. So, rights, opportunities, security and respect of women dignity, respect of everybody. This is our way from where we can bring not only prosperity, but happiness too. For this, tourism sector is a very important sector of economic growth.